My friend, there'd be no incredible historical things that even to this day are still, still one of the miracle wonders of the world that God used Moses to do. It's about how Moses got there. How did Moses, and it's about Jochebed. There would have been no Moses, no way in the world this would have happened if it was not for the faith of Jochebed. The faith of Jochebed. Exodus chapter number two. We're going to read verses one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Ready? And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. So we're talking about Moses is the baby here. Can anybody guess the mother's name? Jochebed. So the name is, her name is, well, it's later in the scriptures, but her name is Jochebed. And this is an amazing story, not just of Moses, which I've preached many sermons about Moses. One of the greatest leaders, one of the meekest leaders, the Bible says. Un- incredible miracles, the parting of the Red Sea that God used Moses, and the ten plagues of Egypt that God used Moses. The Ten Commandments came down to Moses. Again, so amazing things happened by this man. But this, this morning's message is not about Moses. This morning's message is about Jochebed. And my friend, there would be no incredible historical things that even to this day are still, still one of the miracle wonders of the world that God used Moses to do. It's about how Moses got there. How did Moses, and it's about Jochebed. And we're going to look at some of the scriptures here today, and you're going to be able to see that's true. There would have been no Moses, no way in the world this would have happened if it was not for the faith of Jochebed. The faith of Jochebed. It doesn't say too much about his dad. It says a lot more about his mom, and I believe that his mom was a woman of faith, And the mom was a mom who was steadfast. And we're going to see some things here. I'm telling you, it is amazing when you look at the life of Jochebed and how God used her and recorded her, by the way, in some amazing ways. And so in case you don't know the story, I'll take just a few minutes to kind of explain what took place. I'm going to go back to Joseph. Joseph's brothers sold Joseph into slavery, and he went to Egypt. And there in Egypt, he was under Potiphar's house, went to prison, but make a long story short, interpreted a dream for Pharaoh, got became second in command, and then, as a result of that, spared the nation of Egypt and really the world at that time, and his brothers came back, Joseph's brothers came back to worship Joseph, begging for corn, begging for food, begging for bread. He said, well, you know what, bring your, basically bring the other brother, bring, your, bring, bring dad, Jacob, back, if you would, which is Israel, bring him back. So make a long story short, because of the famine, all of Israel moved over to Egypt. This is where the Israelites started in Egypt. Now, they lived there for many years, 400 plus years. After a while, the people of Israel began to grow, I mean 400 years, they began to grow and they got to be so big that it looked like they were overpopulating the Egyptians. And so The Pharaoh got scared that they were going to overpopulate and take over Egypt, that he said, I'm making the decree that all the boys that are born to the Israelites are to be slain and thrown into the river. And I need to kill them. He commanded all the midwives that when a baby is born, if it is a boy, you're to kill the boy. Wow. Well... Jochebed gives birth 
to, to a baby boy. The Bible says she looked at him and said, man, he's a cute little kid, goodly look upon him, he's a cute little boy. I cannot do this. The midwife did not do this either. So she hid him, the Bible says, for three months. She hid Moses. I don't know where she hid him at. I don't know how you hide a baby, but she hid him for three months. And it got to the point she realized she could no longer hide him. The screams are too loud. The cries are too frequent. Whatever the case is, so she, then she made a little, just a little, a little, little, little boat, a little ark, you know, bulrushes. You know, you just got a bunch of bamboo, if you would, or just different kind of sticks and all this stuff, and you know, put that little slime and pitch, and you know, you make some mud and some clay, and you kind of, kind of, hopefully waterproof it, if you will. And so she did all this stuff, and she makes this little, just a little bit of a, you know, like a little baby tub, if you would, and. You know, just out of sticks and, and some, some clay and some dirt and kind of makes it waterproof as much as she could. And I'd imagine she kind of knows where Pharaoh's daughter frequents and maybe, I'm thinking she had some sort of, because you see what happens there, she, she had some sort of idea what's going on. So she put her son, Moses, you want to talk about some faith right now, into a crocodile infested river and puts Moses into this river. The Bible says that there was a lid to it, so there was, you know, had a lid to it. Sends them down the river. The Bible says that the sister, Miriam, is looking, older sister, is looking and kind of watching what's going to happen. She's, can you imagine it now? This little flotation device is floating down the river, and she's kind of watching it, kind of, you know, between the, the trees and whatnot from a distance and kind of watching the this little arc of bulrushes, if you will, kind of go, going down the river. And sure enough, Pharaoh's daughter's going down to the river. All the servants of Pharaoh's daughter is going down. And sure enough, Pharaoh's daughter happens to see this little flotation device. And it's like, what is that? And says to the servant, would you go please fetch that? I'm just very curious. You don't usually see these types of little boat, baby boats, if you will. It had a lid. They didn't know what it was. The servant goes and gets this thing and opens the lid. Can you hear the scream of a baby boy? She knew it was a Jewish boy. Pharaoh's daughter knew the... But it's almost as if God intervened in her mind to say, somebody went to a lot of problem to make sure that they would make this vessel to put... The, the, the risk of putting the baby into the water. Hmm. Let me take this baby in. Right at that time when she decided to take the baby in, the, Miriam, Moses' Moses's sister, runs up to Pharaoh's daughter and says, Hey, um, since, you're going, since you're taking the baby in, hey, I... Um, how about you let me go get somebody who can, one of the Jewish ladies, to nurse the baby for you? Are you okay if I do that? She's like, you know, that's a really good idea. Well, who do you think Moses' sister goes gets to go nurse this baby boy? That's right, the mom. So she goes gets mom. Mom, she said, yes, you can nurse your son. Then when he gets of age, she brings him back to Pharaoh's castle. And he becomes Pharaoh's grandson. This is a crazy, this is an amazing story of all these chain of events. After that, Moses makes a decision. He knows that God has called him to save the nation of Israel. He kills an Egyptian soldier that was beating up on a Jew. He kills the Egyptian soldier, buries him. They, he heard Pharaoh heard about it. He got scared to death. He, he, Moses runs for his life. Goes into the wilderness. For 40 long years, he's in the wilderness. Can you imagine mom right now and has no idea where her son is? Mom right now is worried sick. Son has committed murder. He's a criminal. He's now a vagabond. Running for his life. Do you know how bad mom wanted to go look for her son? But the faith here is amazing. But I, before I state about her faith, can I just tell you real quickly about her fear? 
You know that there was a fear that she had of her son dying there in the river and dying at the hand of Pharaoh. There was fear of Moses' future. Can you see the fear of being separated from her own son? Can you see the fear of what Pharaoh is going to do? And so there was just a fear that Jochebed had of what's going to happen in the future, especially in this instance and this time in history of Egypt and Israel's union and how this was happening. Can I just state this? I believe in 2024, there's a lot of us today that have fears of what's going to happen in our future, our nation's future, our family's future, the future in general. How how many ever think about what's going to happen to my kids when they grow up? How many of you, your kids are grown up, and you're like, that's exactly what I feared. (laughs) But there's always a fear. And can I tell you about the faith that overrode the fear? Can I tell you about what Jochebed did? In spite of what she feared, she stepped out in some amazing, crazy, bold faith. Even the fear of death and the fear of the future and the fear of the separation. Let me tell you about her faith. Let me tell you about, the Bible says here that faith without works is dead. He said, listen, I can tell you by my faith, by my works, James says. I can tell you my faith by my works. Watch what Jochebed, look at what she does. She waits for three months. That right there is risky. If she got caught, she'd die, and so would the baby. But she hit him for three months, and then she realized that it's not going to work. Then she says, you know what? I'm just going to build a little thing and just throw him out in the river, see what happens. Man, that's also risky. That's also a step of faith. Then she sends a sister out. That's also risky. That's also a step of faith. And then the sister talks to Pharaoh's daughter, which is also risky and also a step of faith. And then she recommends mom, which is also risky and also a step of faith. And then mom takes Moses back in, nurses him. Very, very unbelievable. And then she makes the decision to put him back when he gets got of age, send him back into the castle to, be, to live with Pharaoh, which is also fearful, risky, not knowing what's going to happen to him. And unbelievable ventures all the way through. Can I tell you this? We also hit some unbelievable ventures all the way through. There are some trials. There are some areas as we have children, as we raise our young people, listen, that are very risky. These babies that we just dedicated for Christ, man, I'm excited to watch what God's going to do in their lives. But I'm also scared to see what's going to happen. But the faith overrides the fear. Oh, but we, we've got a great God. Hang on a second. We've got an unbelievable, miracle-working God that can do things that we never would dream or ever Im- would imagine. And this morning, I believe we have some, some, some moms that have some fears. By the way, we understand those fears. This morning, I think we have some moms that at times are concerned about maybe being separated from your kids. There might be some split homes here today. Maybe some blended families, and maybe you share custody, and maybe there's some difficulties with the home. And you hate being separated from your kids, and there's just some fears with that. Can I tell you something? God sees those fears. God knows those fears. Maybe your young person is away from the Lord, and you fear for them. Just as perhaps Jochebed feared as Moses killed a man and left and ran away, never to be seen again, you don't think his mom thought, I can't believe I failed as a mother. I can't believe my son is now a criminal. You don't think that mom felt as if she made some mistakes. I should have never put him in, I should have never gave him back to Pharaoh's daughter. I should have just ran away with them. You don't think she's thinking twice about some things, how she raised or what she did, the decisions that she made? And how many of us here today, sometimes when we see the mistakes of our children and the sins of our children, oftentimes we blame ourselves and say, I can't believe, I should have have changed this. And there's some fears with that. Times that we second guess ourselves because of the mistakes of our children. But can I tell you something? God was in all of it. God was orchestrating some things, and hey, Jochebed, don't lose your faith. Hey, Jochebed, don't lose your strength. Hey, don't lose your courage. 
God is, I mean, I know, that's a, I know that was wrong. I know that was a sin. I know that was a mistake. I know he's a criminal. I know Pharaoh wants him dead. I get all that. I know he just took off. I know you're scared to death. I know you're in panic mode. I, I get all this, but God is still behind the scenes working at large. Hang on, Jacobet. The story is not over yet. It's been 40 years. 40 years. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11 once, please. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. You think that Jochebed remains faithful. You think that she remains this lady of faith. Let's see what the Bible says. So Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the hall of faith. Okay, uh, In this chapter, I believe Paul wrote it, but I, I see here the surmising of the faith of all the patriarchs. You see Noah here. You see Abraham here. You see Enoch here. You see all the patriarchs, if you will, of the Christian faith. Guess, guess who is listed as an unbelievable patriarch. Well, in this case, it would be matriarch. As a matriarch of our Christian faith, hardly ever mentioned in the Bible at all, but she makes the hall of faith list here in Hebrews chapter 11. Go with me to verse number 23, please. Hebrews 11, verse number 23, watch this. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months, wow, of his parents because they saw that he was a proper, or Old Testament says goodly, which means a very healthy, good-looking child, a very proper child, and they were not afraid. Their faith overrode their fear. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. Wow. Wow. So verse 23 is not about Moses, it's about his parents. What his parents did, his parents' faith, and what his, how his parents stepped out against all odds, parents still demonstrated that faith. And specifically in Exodus chapter 2, it was the mother who made the, the ark. It was the mother that put him in the river. It was the mother that hid him for three months. And then verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was come of, to years, Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a big statement. That's a really big statement. When he became an adult, the Bible is saying here, by faith, by the way, by faith, Moses said, I refu I'm refusing to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Who took Pharaoh or who took Moses in? Pharaoh's daughter. Who raised Pharaoh? I'm sorry, Moses. Pharaoh's daughter, who paid Moses' mom to nurse him. By the way, she paid him, she paid her to do this. So Jochebed got paid to nurse her own son by Pharaoh, <laughs> Pharaoh's daughter. Who paid for all that? Pharaoh's daughter. Why is it that when Moses got to be an adult, he said, I do not want to be called Pharaoh's daughter, a son, a son of Pharaoh's daughter? That's a very bold statement. And he said this by faith. Can I tell you why? The faith of Jochebed, his mother. I believe that when Jochebed raised him for those few years, and it could have been up to he was six or seven years of age, for those years that she nursed him, and similar to what Hannah did to Samuel, for those years that she nursed him and then brought him back to the courts of Pharaoh, for those years I believe that Jochebed instilled so much into Moses while he was young, I mean, like five, six years of age, and, and just put everything into him that she, that, she, that she could, that he did not forget the faith of his mom, Jochebed. He did not forget the faith that she instilled into him and the difference that she made, even as a young person. Then he's older, and he makes the decision. Wow. Never forgetting who he was. Never forgetting who, where he came from. Never forgetting the passion of his mother. This is an unbelievable thing. So if, if you look at her works, Jochebed's works, all these steps of faith against all odds, let me give you another work of, 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 of Jochebed. She was passionate. She had to have been passionate. She was passionate for God. She was passionate to make sure that Moses 
knew who God was and that when he got to be an adult, he still remembered who he was. And by the way, he did remember who he was because he made a decision who he's going to choose. If you continue in Hebrews chapter 11, look at what he chose in verse number 25. Hebrews eleven twenty five, 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, this is Moses now, the reproaches of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Wow. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And it just talks, talks more about Moses. He chose to suffer the afflictions of the people of God. He chose to, to, to accept the reproaches of Christ. He chose to choose the ways of God. Can I, this, how in the world would Moses, after being raised in court, uh, Pharaoh's courts, being taught all the Egyptian manners of life, he would then decide, I want to go back and I want to suffer. I want to go back and I don't want to enjoy the pleasures of sin. I don't want to enjoy the riches of Egypt. No, no, I could. I don't want to. I want to go back here and suffer and suffer reproach. Because I believe the faith of Jochebed. I believe his mom, who so passionately taught him, who so passionately prayed for him. You don't think that woman was praying as he was every day? As she looked perhaps at that palace? As she looked perhaps, maybe look, looking, maybe peering and seeing Moses run in the courts and whatnot and you don't think she saw and thought and prayed and prayed and worried and stressed and prayed and prayed and God please and stayed passionate passionate oh God please work on my son she stayed passionate for God passionate in prayer can I tell you this if there's any time that we America we York we Bible Baptist Church needed a praying uh, group of ladies needed praying moms it is now there's something special about a mother's prayer. There's something special about a mother's passion. There's something special about a lady who gets a hold of God and can change people by God's grace. And man, her son, after he became an adult, years down the road, came back and said, I'm going to go back as a Hebrew. I'm going to go back and suffer. I'm going to go back. And he made a mistake. He killed an Egyptian soldier for beating a Hebrew in defense, but nonetheless, it still was murder. He leaves and runs for, by faith. He does all this. I believe his mom is ringing through his head. I believe the prayers of his mom. I believe the passion, the passion of his mom was ringing through that. Many of you would, could say, I would not be here if it wasn't for my mom, not only physically but also spiritually. Many of you here this morning say, I have a praying mom. I know I do. I know she prays for me. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. The decisions that you've made to be in church, the decisions that you make to follow God today, some of you would say, because I've got a passionate, praying mom. And today, ladies, if you're worried about your future, if you're worried about the future of your young people, follow Jacobed steps and have faith and be passionate. Teach your kids passionately about God. Teach them about the word of God. No wonder it was Moses who received the commandments of God. I gotta wonder how much did his mom pour into him? Whew. The prayers of his mom, how much God worked in Moses. But you see the parents are listed here in the hall of faith as shaping and molding Moses' life unbelievable thing. Never, never, never give up on your children. Today is Mother's Day. Never, never, never give up. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands because I, I know it's some many ways it's a, uh, a very personal thing. But if I had to ask you today, how many of you Ladies are worried about the future of your young people. I would dare say many of you would raise your hand because we all have the same feelings and fears that Jacobed does. We all live in the same world that she lived in. Now, we don't have the same exact pressures today, but can I tell you this? 
the world is eating our kids up. The philosophies of the world are eating our kids up, and it, it's, uh, it's incredible. Just as Moses was raised in the Egyptian mindset of the world, and Jacob had praying against it, and Moses makes a decision when he hits an adult to, hey, I want to suffer with Christ. Our kids also, by the time they become adults, have to make a decision on their own when they do that tassel switch. I want to be a Christian. I want to serve Christ. I know it's going to come with persecution. I know it's going to come with sufferings. And I know it's going to come with reproach. I know it's not cool. But because of what I have learned and what I am I've, I've, I've experienced Egypt, I've experienced the world, and I want to give all that I've got to serve God because you've got a praying mom. Somewhere back there, somewhere, maybe a praying dad somewhere, or a praying pastor, or a praying church that is begging God for these young people that just sit up here, and many of the young people that are sitting out there and are in the classes right now, listen, we have got to understand there's a faith that Jochebed had, and there was a passion that Jochebed had, and there was a fear that, yes, that she had, but man, the faith that she had that's listed in Hebrews chapter 11 that overrode the fears that just gripped many of the children of Israel's souls, and today, the fears that grip the children of God's souls that are living in this world of 2024 is creating paralysis amongst the churches today of moms or dads are saying, we need to get a hold of our young people and passionately teach them and passionately love them and mold them and shape them to see faith in God and what God can do. Listen, I don't think Jacob had any idea that God was going to use her son to give deliverance to the Israelites out of Egypt. I don't think she had any idea that her son was going to be used to go to Pharaoh, not his, the same Pharaoh, the, the next Pharaoh, but go to the next Pharaoh and say, let my people go. You don't think that God had all this orchestrated because Pharaoh knew those courts. Pharaoh knew where to go. I'm sorry, Moses. Moses knew those courts. And Moses, I grew up here. I know this place. And goes back to the next Pharaoh and says, hey, I got some, a little bit of relation around here. But I'm telling you, let my people go. Do you know how big of a statement it is for Moses to say that? And how God used Jochebed to put Moses in the river, to be raised by Pharaoh, which he needed to be, then leaving for 40 years and coming back, and how God worked all those things. That man, unbelievable orchestration, all because of faith of a mom who believed that God would answer prayer against all odds against every obstacle that could be thrown at you to where you're, you believe your son is going to die in a river to rising to be the deliverer of the nation, to be used to see so many miracles of God. But I'm going to say this. I don't, I'm not going to credit all that to Moses. I believe he's a great man of God, yes. But I believe it's because of his training. I believe of what was instilled into him. I believe of the prayers that were for him. I believe there were some parents, I believe specifically a mom, that saw much more in her son than what her son saw in himself. Can I just encourage you ladies here today? Be ladies of faith. Be ladies of faith. Be ladies of the word. Be ladies of passion for God. And never, never give up on your children. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to be Moses's. And some really doozies. I mean, you're going to think that, okay, you can't come back from this one. They didn't think Moses could come back from that. You think Moses would ever come back to Egypt? Absolutely not. How did God work all that out? We have an amazing God. Let me give you not only the work of Jochebed, but let me give you the heartbreak of Jochebed. She loses her son, though he's alive, for 40 years. He becomes an Egyptian that breaks the Jews' hearts. He commits murder. It also breaks the mom's heart. He runs for his life. That breaks her heart. It looks like her faith has been in vain. It looks like all this has just been a complete wash. I've lost my son. And the heartbreak of a mother, the heartbreak of a parent, especially ones that are of faith, can look so dark and so impossible, there's no way to return from this. This is what Jochebed felt. We can't come back from this. 
How in the world is this going to happen? Moms, if you feel as if your adult children or teenage children have made some serious mistakes that you don't think they could ever come back, I want you to meet Jochebed. And I want you to feel what she felt for a minute. And I want you to see, after 40 years, it wasn't over. And the greatest things were yet ahead. You can't lose faith. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. God's not done working. And Moses is a premier example. The heartbreak. I believe we're sitting here today, and I'm looking at many, many a mom, perhaps, or many a parent, a lady. And maybe your heartbreak is that you're, you're a Hannah, and your room has been barren, and you've been begging God to open your room. Every lady here has some sort of heartbreak. And you experience that heartbreak, and I encourage you. Learn from Jochebed today. By the end of her life, to see the full swing of how God works. And it took decades. It did not happen overnight. It took decades. Now, I see the work of faith. I see the heartbreak of her faith. And lastly, let me give you the fruit of her faith. The work of her faith and what she did to save Moses' life, the heartbreak of what her son did. But then we have the fruit. Mm. When the Bible says that by faith we have the victory, and we can overcome the world by faith, when the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith, when Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, hey, listen, according to your faith, be it unto thee, which means this, the more faith that I have, the more that he says I'm going to give fruit or give reward to that according to your faith. So here's what I have to say, understand. I'm not going to lose, I mean, I can lose a lot of things, but I'm not going to lose my faith in this book and what God can do. I'm not losing my faith in prayer. I'm not going to lose faith in my church or my walk with God. But look at the fruit of Jochebed's faith. Her son never lost the teachings. Hebrews chapter 11 teaches us Moses, he chose this to suffer. Chose the afflictions. This is the fruit of Jochebed's faith. This is the fruit of Jochebed's labor. The fruit of her heartbreak. And yes, we're going to be diligent for the Lord, but also you're going to experience heartbreak from the Lord or heartbreak by faith, heartbreak in your family. But listen, when that happens, do not lose your faith because it's not over. The fruit's coming. The fruit's coming. Just stay diligent. Hey, that blessing is coming. Stay faithful. Stay diligent. Stay in prayer. Continue to beg God and plead with God. And amidst all kinds of evil and darkness, don't give up on what God can do. How many of you know that you serve the God of the impossible? Would you say amen to that? Where you and I don't think there is a way, God says, no, 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 I can do anything. Everything is possible with God. There's nothing that is impossible with God, including your own family. Hey, including your marriage. Hey, including your kids. Hey, your grandkids. Somebody praying for your grandkids right now? Your church, your brothers, your sisters in Christ, those that are sick, those that you've been praying for. Listen, don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop your faith. The fruit, wow, hold up now. Now, we don't know. The Bible does not say that Jochebed was alive when Moses came back after 40 years. I don't know where she was. But I'm going to just paint the picture. Whether she was in heaven or whether she was on earth, I'm going to paint the picture that Jochebed knew because she could see from heaven or see it from the earth. She knew what was happening to her son. He sees a burning bush. God speaks to Moses from the burning bush. I am that I am. Go back. You're going to go back. I can't speak. I'll give you your brother, Aaron. He'll, he'll speak for you. Ha! Okay. I'm really scared, though, because last year I had, you know, I was wanted for dead. I don't want to go back. It's okay. I've, I've given the Pharaoh a new heart. You're going to be fine. Go back. He goes back. Received and does some miracles. Cast down a rod, becomes a serpent. Hand becomes leprous, sticks it in there, comes out, it's healed. Does some just, just unbelievable miracles and 
Can you imagine mom be like, what? He became a magician after 40 years? He became some miracle? I got, what? The last I remember my son, he committed murder. And 40 years later, he's like some man of God? What? Whoa. He actually is still following Jehovah God. Whoa. He's actually going to come here to give deliverance. And he says to Pharaoh, let my people go. Can you imagine this? Whoa, we're actually going to be set free. Wait, are you saying that my prayers 40 years back, my prayers 50, 60 years back when I gave birth to him, that my prayers are now being rewarded, my faith is now becoming sight, that we're going, to be, we're going home. We're going back to the, the land of a promise. We're going back to Israel. Wow. We're, wait, what? They, my, all these pl- lice, blood, frogs, this and this and that, and this and then the other thing, that's my son. Well, that's, a son, that's not no rod. That's my son's rod. Whoo, man, can you believe that? They get stuck at the, at the Red Sea. I mean, everybody is so upset. Man, Moses, you brought us out here to die. Hang on, boys. Calm down. My mama taught me something. And when you, know what, when, you, when you don't know what to do, you pray to the one who knows what to do. Amen. My mama taught me that. Y'all just calm down. Okay, Lord, I got no idea what I'm doing. What, in, what, what, what is going on right now? <sighs> By the way, today, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Fear not. Lord, I am scared to death. Hey, Moses, so was your mom when she gave birth to you. So was your mom three months later after that. So was your mom when she was nursing you. So was your mom. Your mom was, and that faith, it carries through. Can you see mom? Man, that's my boy. Woo! Take that stick, put it over that, that, whole, that whole Red Sea. No, uh Can you see mom? If it was in heaven on earth. I don't know where she was. But can you see mom right now? Wow. That is amazing. Man, I was stressing for years over this. I have wept a bucket, a buckets of tears of, of, over Moses. And to see the fruit now, wow, unbelievable. It doesn't stop with that. He takes him over, crosses the right, goes over in the wilderness. Moses wants to get a hold of God. God says, come up here in this mountain, Mount Sinai. Comes up with that mountain. And hold of God is everybody else. Y'all stay down there. They all were dancing and making all kinds of golden calf and this and that. But not Moses. No, sir. He got a hold of God, and God gave him the commandments. God gave him the law. It's changed us today. Changed Israel. But I gotta wonder. Did he pray like his mama prayed? Was he seeking for God the same way his mom was seeking for God? Did he remember when his mom was begging God? He remember saw, you know, five and six years of age, he's watching his mom. I got to wonder if some of those characteristics in the son he got from his mom or his dad. But in, th- in this instance, in Exodus 2, it mentions his mom. And I have to wonder if that was the fruit of Jochebed's faith. Decades and decades later, can I encourage you this morning, wherever you are today, Fear, tears, guilty, it's like you make a mistake. You don't think that you could ever make up whatever happened. Welcome to Jochebed. Felt the exact same way. Can I encourage you this morning? Be a Jochebed. The fruit's coming. The blessings are coming. And again, I don't know if it's going to be in this life or in the next life. I don't know where Jochebed was but I believe she was a lady that never lost faith, never stopped praying, never stopped believing in God. Change today, we're here, perhaps because of a very unknown lady hidden in some village of Egypt, scared to death her life and her son's life. 
having no idea today. Ladies, you may be feeling the same way, but let me give you this biblical truth. The God of the impossible makes things possible. Where you think there's no way, God says, oh, no, no, I can make a way. You think it's over, God says, no, 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 it's not over. It's not over. It's not over till I say it's over. And my friend, if you're breathing air, and we're here today, God has a plan, and God can work. 